All right, back again, Luke here. And this is part six of that 1989 Beastbusters arcade project here that I've been working on for who knows how long. Uh, one thing that uh, might brighten up the situation here is I was actually talking to a really, really nice guy who goes by the name of Arcade UK. And uh, ironically enough, his name's Luke as well. He puts up a lot of videos as far as like arcade PCB repairs. He makes them look really easy, really easy to talk to you guy really easy to listen to as far as uh, you know his advice and his videos go and uh, anyway I made up a video here and I decided to shoot it over to him and see what he thought and his guess was that this uh, 700 4C chip here, this one. This is an analog uh, chip. And his idea was that maybe this thing is actually bad. And if you remember, the other one actually had this one was bad on it, and that's why it wouldn't boot up. It had like all the strange characters and things uh, showing up. So I only had the one, and when I tried to boot up the other board, I actually swapped this one out. And he said, probably it's carrying the same problem over to the other board. So I thought, oh, okay, that really does make sense. Uh, interestingly enough, though, about two weeks before that, I kind of had a, a hunch that this might be a problem as well. So what I did is uh, I made a preemptive uh, attack, I suppose, here, and I went out and paid for these. I bought these off of um, eBay. These are from China. These are are the 704 C chips and they just came in today so kind of ironic that he had mentioned that I actually bought three of them so we'll uh, we'll try and pop this old one out and we'll put in these new ones and see how it goes I have to put this thing down here we'll see um, see what these look like I haven't even opened them up yet hopefully everything's intact and no problems try and open this beast up here for the beast But uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get this thing running. All right, well it's in a plastic bag. Good. Do -do -do -do. And there they be. That is the chips here. So let's uh, get one of these out. And let's, whoa! As we bump the camera and almost knock it over. Craziness. All right, so we've got our chip there. You can see the legs are a bit sprawled out, so we're going to uh, kind of bend these down a bit here. Find a flat surface just to bend them in a little bit. That way they'll slide in. Maybe a bit more. But uh, it'd be really nice if this fixes the situation because <laughs> this was driving me mad. All right, so we got that there. Next thing we're gonna have to do is uh, remove the old one, which means that we're gonna have to do some kind of crazy stuff here. And we can get this to stay down here, possibly. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> so I just got a regular flathead screwdriver here. This one shouldn't be too difficult to pop up. It's in a socket, so. Yeah, it comes out piece of cake. So, look at this here. Always want to make sure that you put this thing in the proper way where the notch is facing the correct direction. Make sure that you don't bend any legs when you pop that in. That looks pretty good. And see, we've got tip switch number eight we'll be putting up there. And that should be ready to go. So, let's uh, let's try this out here. Uh, let's see if I can find something to set the camera on while we test it. That way you guys can see exactly what goes on as I see what goes on with this thing. And we'll pop this back up here. And get up there. Okay. That should be alright. So let's turn the power on here. friendly sound that I've heard about a million times here. Alright. So, well that's kind of stretched out. Looks very stretched out. Is that, uh, do I have the monitor in the wrong setting? Probably do. Let's see. Up. Up. There we go. That's a little bit better. 
Head in 31 uh, kilohertz there for my other um, biohazard game. All right, let's try this. Let's try and turn off the lights a little bit, make it a little easier to see. All right, we got top, middle, bottom. Let's try this one again. Top, middle, bottom. And we'll remove number one again. And we'll put that on number three. We'll take this one off here. Put that on number three. Alright, we'll do this again. Let's see. Top, middle, bottom. And player two's gun error. No! <laughs> what is going on with this thing? Ah! <laughs> player two has a gun error. This is driving me nuts. All right. You know what we're going to do? We're going to turn this off. And we're just going to use player one. And see if that does anything. Oh my gosh. Ridiculous. <laughs> At least it's doing something different now. So that's good. We'll, uh, we'll disconnect that, disconnect player two, and we'll just use player one for now. Let's see. Okay, let's turn this back. Well, let's plug in player one to player one. Let's see, there's player one in player one spot. And that's in player one. Okay, let's try this again. Arg. Okay, let's see. Start, start, start. Okay, let's see. One, two, three. Switch this over to player two. player three. <clears throat> right, there's one, two, three. EPROM right complete. Wow. It actually, it worked. Yay. <laughs> wow. What the, what do I have to do here? Do I have to shoot again? Because this is irritating. Player four? There is no player four. Does that mean I can turn this off? I'm going to turn it off. We'll turn it back on again. Ah, there might be a chance this, this thing actually works. Let's see, four gun position, player one. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's just doing it again. But at least it said uh, right complete, so we're going to do this. We're going to put the dip switch back up. Then we will turn this back on, and hopefully it will let us go into the game. Yes, it does! Woohoo! It's alive! It's alive again! Oh, I'm so happy to be able to see the title screen again. This thing drives me nuts. I hate it. <laughs> But I love it. Okay, let's see if it registers anything here with the, uh, well, let's see how, how the first gun shoots. So there's an error with gun two somewhere. I don't know what's going on. I'll have to double check that. But something's bad. So let's put in a couple coins. All right, let's hit start. <sighs> Okay. Okay. Oh, I am so happy to be able to see this again. Let's see. 
Okay. Well, we can kill stuff now. It's a. It seems a little bit sloppy here as far as the. Uh, um, the EEPROM, or not the EEPROM, what am I talking about? As far as the uh, pot goes, it, it's not exactly the best here. I think I'll have to retry it again, but it is working, and I can kill stuff. It's alive, guys! So, there we go. Stage, uh, what did it take? About six, uh, six videos here to get it going, but, uh, Nonetheless, we are ready to rock. Just want to say a, uh, a huge thanks too to um, Arcade UK for uh, <laughs> recommending the same thing that I thought would be bad as well. But actually, you know, he's a, a fantastic guy, really knows a lot about uh, arcade circuit boards. And to be honest, I think without him I would go mad. <laughs> He's a really good guy. And if you guys are interested in the stuff that I do, you should definitely go over and check him out as well. Really, really uh, down-to-earth guy. But uh, yeah, as you can see here, it is finally storing the information, and all it came down to was that 704C chip. So for those of you out there who have had any kind of trouble, this thing's not going to focus, is it? Have you had any trouble here with the uh, Beast Busters and it not registering? It's probably related to this chip right here. Those are, uh, you know, that's that's probably what's going on. He had also made a uh, mention that down here with this LS245 uh, that it could be the problem as well. And to check the traces on the bottom here of, of the board as well as the socket for this. Uh, because if the socket's a little bit loose, then it won't um, it won't work either. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's there. It's almost ready, and I think maybe give it a couple more days or so, and I'll get everything all wired up and kind of fine tuned here, and we'll do some gameplay on this monster. But that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So, thanks for watching. Watching the Beast Buster Saga! Yay! Alright, so what I thought I'd do here at the very end is put up another little update. And I managed to get both of these guns working. And you won't believe it, uh, there was uh, quite a few problems that were still remaining with these two guns, but they were really, really intermittent and it was really difficult to see. As you can see here, I have uh, a lot of wires, uh, wire ends that I have snipped off, and a lot of the problems were coming from some like hit and miss connections. So especially around in this area, I replaced all of them. There was one of the ground wires that was a little bit uh, bare, so I decided to remove that and I put new wires on here. I also did the same thing on this side, and I did it on the front here as well. But uh, yeah, it's something where these wires are so stuck in there and they're usually kind of zip tied in. You can't see exactly what's wrong with them. And normally with this, uh, with this setup here, the way that they were held in there, it was difficult to find any problem. And the only reason why I found it was that I was uh, messing around with the, uh, the positioning here. Trying to do this uh, two-handed was extremely difficult. But what I was doing is I was using my uh, my multimeter and I was trying to test continuity between all of these wires and you know lo and behold you come across a couple of wires here's uh, here's one end here's the other end let's see now it's gonna do it isn't it I don't know if you can hear, hear that or not but it's cutting off so the uh, the wires here were actually broken on the inside and that's what was causing a lot of the uh, the hit and miss kind of detection here so that's a huge issue and it's really impossible to see there was a zip tie that was around this area and uh, the rest of it was down here so when you had the guns fully uh, cranked back just like in the normal position or pulled forward there was no problem, it was making a connection, but when you turned it from side to side, then it was kind of clicking and not clicking, and it was really impossible to check that, because when I went and checked the, um, the wire harness, everything turned out fine, so 
huge problem with that stuff. I also came across a uh, broken screw here that was used to hold down one of the uh, the uh, da -da -da base plates. So I wound up replacing that, put a new screw in there, and yeah, after a couple hours of uh, kind of systematic troubleshooting and problem testing here with this one, I was able to get uh, gun one and gun two ready to go. So they're both done. I went through the EEPROM um, initiation sequence and they both registered and it both said uh, initiation complete. So yeah, these things are ready to go, and uh, all I'm going to do is try and put these things back together. As you can see, they're still half, um, you know, kind of bare here. I'll put the bottom plates on, and then we're going to do some zombie killing here around the time of uh, Halloween. So that should work out really nicely. But yeah, so probably the next, I don't know, day or so, maybe tomorrow or so. I'll put up a video on some Beastbusters action. Finally, get a chance to play this thing after having the board for who knows how long. It's been a really long time, but uh, it's it's time to do some zombie killing. So, yeah, nonetheless, just want to share this little final note here with you guys and let you know what's going on. And, yeah, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So, thanks for watching. And tomorrow, we'll be watching Zombies Die.